most unimaginable stench. <sighs> the assassins. This, uh... Don... Don assassin? What are they? Apparating out of thin air. They must be Daedra of some sort. That can be the only explanation. Also, Richard, I want to say that I am so upset with you. Do you understand? You not you need to not wander away from daddy all the time, okay? <sighs> I care for you so much, my boy. I did think about replacing you immediately, but never mind that. <laughs> you're you're my one and only, Richard. You could never be replaced. <sighs> Anyways, on to other musings, I suppose. Here's another folktale, this one being from Morrowind. And uh, I thank myself for the, the gift of gab, for I am able to remember it almost word for word. This is a traditional Dunmer tale called Almalexia and the Mud Crab. There was once a mud crab who suffered much. He had a limp and a hacking cough. His shell was misshapen, causing him pain. He was weary at all times, and told everyone he was surely dying. He roamed the valley one day, complaining to anyone who would listen. Ah, there it is. The shell created a brace from part of his shell, and offered it to the mud crab. Hey mud crab, try bracing your leg, he advised. No, no, said the mud crab, I have tried that, it does not work. Blood crab, said the elite. Oh. Let me bite on your shell and crack it just a bit to relieve the pressure. The mud crab said, you are trying to trick me, elite. You just want an easy snack. Almalexia, who was roaming the land that day, heard these conversations and entered the valley, where she appeared as a humble guar. Mud crab, she said, take this drought that I have made for your cough. Guar, you are not a healer. It is better to suffer than risk such a poor remedy, replied the mud crab. It was then that Almalexia revealed herself to the creature, who gasped in surprise. Mudcrab, she said, all of these creatures have offered you help, but you refuse. You are in love with complaining, and so you will never be healed. And so Almalexia teaches us that you cannot aid the unwilling. I think this is quite applicable to the situation with Martin. I have given him all of the tools and knowledge that he needs to complete his destiny. Whether he decides to take advantage of that or not, is completely up to him. Brandar cannot worry about this any further. But, as you can tell, it remains in the back of my mind. Oh no. I'm sure he spotted us. Just keep running, Richard. Dad will keep telling the story, make you feel better. Please listen. A rich Breton named Robier, often called uncle by his friends, owned a great plantation whose crops fed dozens of villages. Day and night his serfs worked the field, plucking aphids and worms out by their fingernails if they had to in order to make the produce the best and the most delicious in all of High Rock. Then the creature invaded his fields. Beneath the noses of the workers, it devoured potatoes and cabbages, carrots and lettuce, radishes and beans. It stumped the efforts of the surf to catch it. Sometimes people would think they had it, dive forward to grab it and impale themselves on tools left upon the ground. Other times the creature would sneak up behind them in broad daylight and push them over to break their necks. It was believed that Uncle Robier was somehow cursed, and the creature was some kind of revenge for a person he had wronged in his past. The serfs abandoned the field, willing to risk a week in the stocks rather than death at the hands of the creature. Soon Uncle Robier's fields were stripped bare by the ravenous creature, and even he began to believe the superstition himself. He locked himself in his chateau and pleaded to the divines, but they were silent. All Robier could hear was the sound of the creature scratching beneath the floorboards, inside the walls and in his cupboards, as it devoured all that he had left to eat. Huddled inside his bedroom in the dark of night, 
Robier watched as his last candle burned itself to a knob and went out. And then the creature devoured him as well. Ooh. Is that spooky for you, friends? Oh, he did lose it all, yes. Oh. My bravado has uh, somewhat gone away. What is this? Invisible bears? This can't be real. Leave my Richard alone. Oh, my poor boy. My poor boy, look at him. Oh, you're okay, you're okay. Stupid bear, bad bear. Oh. Let us uh, take a rest together, Richard. There, that's a good boy. Okay, now you stay safe out here. I still want to have a look in this dungeon. I will not be distracted. Oh, yes. Look at all of this. It looks quite familiar to me. Most of these ruins seem to have the same sort of layout to them. I should check. Hmm. Somebody has been here, I think. Novice Calcinators, Alembic. It's about what I have as well. Ah, and Kotar's Journal. Today I begin my great project on the spontaneous generation of life. I suspect that there will be difficult days ahead, but if I succeed, my place among the great mages of history will be assured. Still not able to even reproduce him the Empedocil's result with maggots. I'm beginning to think his reputation is overblown. Empedocles was right. The mistranslation of sunlit to, to scorching heat explains my earlier problems. From now on, I will work only in the original Daedric despite the risks. Hmm. Local peasants came by to complain about the noise. I promised them that that was all behind me. A pleasant, if dull-witted crew. Mourn this, I think. Hmm. The experiment today went better than expected, although the number of rats produced was surprising. They were all remarkably docile, just as Malham predicted, although only I have ever proven it empirically. Villagers again, more complaints. You would think they'd never seen a rat before. They're starting to become a real nuisance. I've run into a terrible snag. Galarian's Night Blob appears immutable. If the total life generated cannot exceed the cube of the source, this line of research may prove a dead end. I must reread Empedocles for any hint on how he was able to circumvent this barrier. The locals are becoming insufferable. While I was walking in the woods, some of them broke into my laboratory and spilled the solution I was preparing. Stay out of my laboratory! How many times do I have to tell you, villagers? Stay out of my laboratory! Ah, <laughs> uh, they spilled nearly a full quart of purified imp gal. Wasted. They did not seem to grasp the absurdity of a crowd of unwashed peasants with dung on their boots complaining about the smell. It is well past time I did something about the problem. Two days later, I dug up the notes from my permanent invisibility thesis. No time like the present to put theory into practice. Today, the spell worked. Not perfect invisibility, of course, Vanto's third law, but it was more powerful than I expected, and if there were none of the side effects that Professor Traven had predicted, ha, <laughs> even in my youth I was already outstripping my elders. Now I can get back to my real work in peace. Hmm. So this does explain the bear. The invisible bear. I hesitate to think what other horrors might be lurking in the depths of this place. But I'm also quite eager to find out. Hmm. Perhaps we can find some other clues. Nothing up here, it seems. Alright, carefully. One. And then two. And down. Excellent. Let us have a look. Fort Caractacus. Oh, now I must do this. Are you sure? I don't think it's necessary. Excellent. Let's be very careful. I think there might be some uh, magical traps waiting for us. 
more than one. Hmm. Perhaps uh, a life detection spell or some such would help me just a little bit. Hmm. This one. Well, the range is not very long. Hmm. It's just long enough. I shall keep an eye down there. Yes. My magic shall help me overcome. But I'm unsure what that thing is. Oh. Hello there. Oh my. Stay away, stay away. Oh, surely they've seen me. Randar disappears. Oh! The dog shoots fireballs! This is something I have never seen. Oh. This is not good, friends. I'm not liking my odds on this one. Oh, she has summoned a Daedra. Oh my goodness. Perhaps it was more than we were prepared for. Oh. Alright. Oh. Easily. Ah. It's quite a wizard. Ah. Down. Down. Oh. A Daedra. Oh no. Ah. No, no, no. Ah. I'm going to need some help on this one. Not good, not good. Perhaps I can uh, silence this thing for just a second. Destroy her, destroy her! Yeah. Sorry, Richard. Oh. I did get her in the end. Oh, what a foe she was. Summoning Daedra. My goodness. But it gives me a rush that I've never felt before. Ah. Uh, let us rest for just a moment. Regain our strength. Before we head back inside. Oh my. I'm curious about the wolf that was shooting the fireballs at me. Here's another imp. That's not too bad. I can handle that for sure. I will need this arrow, however. Mm. Need to be careful of this this hound. Oh, this is another way around. Perhaps I should find the key. A good excuse to go back. Retrace my steps just a little. It smells like burning fur throughout this hall. The most unimaginable stench. I can imagine why the villagers were complaining. But I don't think this bow is going to do well. It is already a flaming hound. Hmm. Perhaps my bow of sparks shall help. Oop waste that. Oh, there he is. What a bad boy he is. <laughs> I know he's still that way. I sense it. How's that? Oh. Never seen such a thing before. It's amazing. This scientist was up to some nasty things. Hmm. 
might like some of those arrows back. Maybe not. This is the scamp I got before. Hmm. Fire salts. Hellhound. Oh my. No wonder. No wonder at all. Let's use some of these steel arrows. I hope nothing else we find will be uh, resistant to fire. As most of my swords and things have uh, prepared me for trolls and whatnot. So a hell hand throws a wrench into things, as it were. There we are. A little more security skill. Oh my. Look at all this. Yes, I like. Please give. And again, filling up on uh, the inventory. A bit more than we should, perhaps. That's fine. Randar's got his, uh... Ooh, blue cloak! Yes, please. Plain summoner hood. Hmm. It offers no protection. I don't want to end up summoning anything accidentally. So I shan't touch it. Alright, let's continue this, this venture into madness. Maybe I could come up with another story. Something sufficiently creepy. Hmm. Is this the way in or out? Out. Out. Surely that's not all that it offers. Oh, damn. Let's go down into the depths. I'm curious what other sorts of works this scientist has implemented. Some might call him mad. He might also just be uh, extremely creative. He has a mind that works in a different way. Is that so bad? I think I saw something over this way. It's a giant circle. Oh, Brandar is losing his mind already in here. Ah, I think the magic is affecting me slightly. Mm, I must keep this life, life detection spell up. And it also helps me with my mysticism. Which is a nice thing. Hmm, perhaps we can unlock this door. I only have five picks, but I don't plan to break even one. There we are. Piece of cake, friends. Not our first time. In the rodeo. Iron helmet. Hmm. Could I do this now? Thank you so much. Please don't hurt Brandar. Novice Alembic. Hmm. I don't think we are in need of that. Frost Shield and Tropic Touch. Yes. These are sure to come in handy. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.